Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League, the Champions League and the Europa League as well. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. The Premier League is back. We'll chat the emotions we found as well as the returning fans. Tottenham stunning Manchester City with Harry Kane nowhere in sight. Manchester United dominating arch-rivals Leeds United in front of a packed Old Trafford. Liverpool open up in style, looking like the Liverpool of old at Carroll Road. Chelsea cruising to a 3-0 victory over Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. And Brentford stunning Arsenal on opening night. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. All right, Robbie Earl, man. Mm-hmm. So I'm so kind of, I guess I'm tired. It was a stunning first weekend back. Mm. Um, obviously, this season, the presence of packed houses has been such a an amazing boost for everybody, the players, for the fans themselves, for us media yeah. following the league, Rob. And Games, wow, yeah. we didn't have to see some, some scenes, some uh, images of people and tears and celebrations and flags and everything else. What? Uh, how joyous was it, my friend? I, I dare say, Rob, and it might sound a bit hyperbole. I think that's the best Premier League weekend we've had. Now, it might be yeah. in contrast that for 18 months we've not had any fans in stadiums. We've seen, you know, everything being a bit sanitised. But this weekend, as you say, the tiredness is through absorption of what we've seen. There's been some brilliant scenes, some brilliant football. Yeah. Yeah. Let's also remember from this weekend, Rob, that VAR hasn't been intrusive oh. in the game. We've seen oh. games go from end to end. We've not been watching oh. lines and armpits and big toenails and all that stuff. And starting off, Rob, I have to say, and I want to get this out early, my underappreciated performance oh. of the weekend, I want to get it out early, are the fans. The yeah. fans coming back to football have taken yeah. it to another level. And, and if, if we can start at where we started at the Brentford Community Stadium on Friday night, against mm-hmm. Arsenal. I mean, do not really get better than that. Promoted team, first time in the top back for 75 years. First time in the Premier League. The mighty Arsenal in town. It's a West London, North London derby. And the scenes there and the shot, Rob, of the guy in tears is one of those memories cool. that I can just see now. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. I said at the weekend, and, and the more I think about it, the more I think it's true that when fans weren't in stadiums, we had good games and we had results. With fans, what, what happens is it, it becomes like a memory. It, it's etched into you, to your mind. And that's what we've had this weekend. Whether it's at, there at, at, at Old Trafford, at, at Carrow Road, at, at, at um, Stamford Bridge. We've seen some great scenes across the league. I think it's a trifecta, Rob. I think obviously the fans totally agree. Mm. Just in terms of how, how different this season is to last season. The fans, incredible. I think the big clubs and the challenging pack to the to the recent Mm. champions Mm. is another part of why this season and the start has been stunning. And also the VAR and the refereeing Mm. role. I mean, all these three things chucked into one is maybe why we're feeling like, wow, that felt like such a a stunning weekend, a successful weekend of great football. You know, just we just talking there before this, like, you know, how did the how did it all go and how the studio shows. Yeah, that was fine. But the football, yeah, the football yeah. was so good, Rob. And we didn't we enjoy every flipping minute from the, <laughs> the first bit of yeah. the Brentford Bees to just watching, uh, of course, Spurs beat Manchester City, Rob. So, um, so good to be back. It really is. We've had a lovely break. But yeah. I'll tell you what, you, you, that's hard to beat watching some of that football over the last three days. Yeah. And, and we just want to, let's just take a look back on Friday night where it all started, yeah. where Luke started. Thomas Franks, Brentford hosting the mighty Arsenal at the Brentford Community Stadium. And you know we were singing. I, I, we were singing the that, mate, as well. <laughs> I, I, got, I got a thought. For the first month of the season, so for another three weeks, we should play 
this the sound from the stadium that's got us up the most from the first week. Yeah. Just appreciation. Let, let, let's see next week. Let, let's see yeah. is, it, is it one of the newly promoted teams or is it one of the other teams? Because we it's just a little appreciation of fans, mate, and, and what they bring and what they give to the game is it, yeah. so so important. Yeah, we could go. I could go on forever about it. Mm. So great, and the and the and the sound of the roar when a goal goes in, <laughs> and the reaction of the players to the fans. It's it's brilliant. Anyway, mate, let's get on with the football. Let's get to the football. Let Let's start cool. it. The new White Hot Lane Stadium that <laughs> was rocking today, my <laughs> friend. Rocking. I mean, the, the flags were in there. The fans were up for it. They were back. In. Players were back. They they've got the reigning champions, Manchester City in town. I mean, you can't make some of this drama up. If you, if you were doing it, it was a Hollywood script. People would say, "Come on, you can't do it." I mean, Harry Kane. All the talk's been about the move to, to Man City. Is it on? Is it off? Was Harry Kane part of his, the team today? Was he in the squad? Did he travel? Was he at the game? All that was answered when we we didn't see he was on the team bus. He wasn't on the team sheet. There was talk that he was in his executive box. Nobody mm. actually saw him. He got no pictures of that. And I think it's important that we don't make this a Harry Kane conversation now. There's going to be those no. over the next few weeks as we get to transfer deadline. Let's talk yeah. about the game. Let's talk about Tottenham. Let's talk about Manchester City. Well, you talk about a club that looks ready for life after him. And we won't we'll talk about it again, Rob. But, you know, mm. I, I, that surprised me, Rob, today. It surprised me. I didn't expect such a galvanised, a united, uh, with a new manager, with the incredible support, with the performance, Rob, the mm. performance of the team. And we'll start with the manager and what he did to the team. And I, tell, I think what he's done, Rob, and we had an interview with him afterwards. Yeah. Um, the boys on the, on the pitch side asked him about his tactics. And, and it's pretty clear, clear that he's looked at the squad, the Spurs squad, and he's thought, okay, how do I set these up? Which I think is the way that coaches should do it. Where, yeah. Where's my talent in this 25-man squad? And what system would f- fit them most of all? Mm-hmm. And it looks like he's come with a, it's like a 4-3-2-1 Christmas tree, if you want to give it a name. Um, but a very narrow system that, that that has plenty of strength in the middle of the park, Rob. Yeah. And it has pace. It has pace on the counter attack with Bergwijn, with Hyun mm. Son, and with Lucas, and with Delhi from midfield. A different sort of game today, playing against City, because you're forced to defend and forced to yeah. chase a little bit. But the counter attacking today from them was superb. And there'll be different uh versions of this system mm. but it sounds mm. like this is what nuno feels is right for this team rob yeah. and what a way to start and to to connect with your football club and your fans which mm. is so so important being a new manager i mean absolutely brilliant brilliant day for 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 uh, bruno you make a couple of points it, it was a, it was a huge game for both his team bruno's first game in charge of spurs and whether kane played or not for for Obviously, Manchester City, the reigning champions, putting down a market. The other three big teams had, had, got, had their, got their business done ahead of, of this game. So it was a, it was a huge game, Rob. And, and the way that you, you're right, and the, the way that Spurs were set up. And I just want to want to you know go a little bit deeper on that. In that, remember Nuno at Wolves was pretty much. We saw a couple of changes towards the end, but it's been pretty much wedded to a back three. With four midfield and often a three or four, four, four three three or four five two, or however it works. But what what you're saying and what it shows, and I think it's important to make this point, is that he, he he's not just wedded to that system like that's the only thing he can do. Because mm. he's gone into that group of players and gone, mm, maybe that doesn't work. So so I tend to feel he's going to have a variation of the theme of the four three sort of three that the, the Christmas tree we saw now mm. today. So there'll be variations of that depending on everybody's not going to possess the ball as well as City. Everybody's not going to have this threat to same as City. But he, he, from his base, he's going to play a certain way. Young Min Sung came to the um, the desk after and he said, we've been working on things from the early days of, of pre-season. So everybody knows every roles and responsibilities wherever they are on the pitch. And, that, and, and the thing that, that came across more than anything, Rob, out of the performances and out of the, the few uh, interviews we heard, there's already a connection between the manager and this group of players. Mm. You don't dig that deep. You don't work that hard. You don't um, do the tactics, employ the tactics in the way the manager set out. If you're not all in, mm. Oliver Skip, Bobby Mustard, yeah. let me name them. Jeffrey yeah. Ten- Tendanga, Deli yeah. Ali, and Lucas Mora were yeah. thankless in, in 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 the in the work that they did. We're so committed to the team, so committed to the, to the setup. Son will get the headlines because Sonny's a star and he is a star. And, and we'll talk about what that might mean if, if Harry, if he, he takes over from Harry. 
But the, the players who did the extra hard yards, Deli Alley, mate, was running and chasing back with a glee. Mm. Like he was enjoying it. Yeah. There, there's some big decisions there, Rob. You look at the bench, though, so who hasn't got the nod. Mm. Mr. Soko. Mr. Yeah. Soko, sorry, that, that's always seems to be in the Spurs lineup. You've got uh, Giovanni Lo Celso uh, and Harry Winks. Yeah, Oliver Skip came yeah. in and did a phenomenal job. He's 20 years old, Rob. Yeah, on loan at knowledge. Booted yeah. out by Jose. No, he's a kid. No good. What, what I like about a manager, Rob, is to go in and put your stamp on the side. He's done it yeah. right yeah. away. Yeah. Big big decisions in terms of personnel. A different system. A game plan against Man City that worked very very well. I, I, I'd love to swatch a game and and get a feel for what each team manager is trying to do. And that's day one. And we we picked out the system early on. Like oh, that's kind of different. That's interesting. Staying high, staying narrow. It's got a plan. I like it. It sounds like the players like it. And again, like. Listen, sometimes it's hard not to get carried away, Rob. Yeah. And, and it's, day day one, one. Yeah. it's a home game. And this and this also carries to some of the other matches, Rob. You know, can you imagine if you know by by having those full house back in the state? I think mean, that's been like ages since they've done that. Yeah, it is gonna drive one. Yeah. And we saw that. We saw that, particularly some of the big boys mm -hmm. that played at home as well. So, you know, from, from Spurs point of view, Rob. Really, really positive. Let's see what they do going forward now. There will be little alterations to it. Yeah. But that, I just that knocked my socks off, mate. And that mm. stadium, by the way, and that that, that cop that's something the special in it, by the way. It's oh. just a wow, it's a jaw dropper. Mm. I mean, yeah. There's 62,000 there, it looks like so many more. Um, brilliant, and it, brilliant. And it had to be a, a decent performance, Rob, and, and to grab the headlines because you are not only against Manchester City, the reigning champions, but also against. The, the, the player whose record signing, British transfer signing, Jack Grealish, made his debut from yeah. the $39 million. We wondered where we play. We did a bit on the tactics board saying that he can play in a number of positions. He played the left side of, of a midfield three where he can break forward. I mean, how did you see Jack's day? And was that related to maybe the team being a little bit constricted with what it did and not, not flows as well as maybe City can do and will do going forward? Um, I thought he did okay, Rob. It's just mm. a, it was a difficult opening day for the whole team. Um, and it, as his position midfield was kind of interesting, I still believe that the next lineup is better. The wide forward in, on the left side, where Sterling played today, where Foden often plays, Rob. I think that's his best spot. But if you want him in the side with a few of the other guys there, then you might play him in midfield. I thought he did okay. I mean, I, I think now, you know, Tanganga, Rob, was incredibly aggressive. Are we going to see, is this a situation where the star player, the, the poster boy really, in some ways already, for he's so different, he's so maverick, he's so kind of flashy, that mm -hmm. he's going to draw attention, Rob, for everybody he plays against to get aggressive and to try and be physical? Is that what we're going to see every week? Yeah, possibly. And, and listen, I think he plays with a bit of motion. He plays on the edge. And as long as he controls that, these players who, we've all played with players who, who that's the way. I just hope that it doesn't ever get more than that, where we start talking more about the emotional stuff in the football. I hope that it doesn't, from, from, a, from a player's point of view, I hope that Man City don't get, it can almost work against them a little bit. Like, there was a little bit of push and shove at the end of the Tottenham game. It didn't lead to much, anything can happen. But if, if Jack starts getting in a lot of those things, it sometimes fires the belly of the opposition and can, can help him raise the game. So sometimes he's got to just pick himself up when he, when he thinks he's been fouled and dust himself down and get on with the game. Not always have the confrontations. I know he's on the edge and I know it's part of his game that he runs across people and he gets clipped and then, you know, that's the reaction. But just don't want that to become a negative and, and be something that affects him and the team. It wasn't a great day for Man City, Rob. And Ferran Torres played in the centre forward or a false mm. nine. He's not really a striker. It still looks a position. We know they're looking for a striker, of course. Yeah, but yeah. it still looks a air in the team that could mm. do with some more presence there it, yeah. you know it, some of the football but football is very very good um just the, that was lacking a little bit today nothing to be worried about city rob too much i know that no. we f both feel i believe that like the the main four spurs might join this four um are going to be pretty pretty hungry to win mm. the title and and if you're going to – having a bad start is yeah. – it could take you out. because you, might three, yeah. you can't At lose too many games. Not. It might be a year yeah. you can't lose too many games. No. That's one already for the facility. That's one, yeah. you know, on day one, which, listen, doesn't mean anything. And this is a yeah. team that could go 20-odd games, as we saw, unbeaten and, yeah. and, and put a run together. But, yeah, not, not a great day for Pep. He'll want to um, get 
some work on the training ground. Says he's only had a couple of days with these players and sort out this centre forward thing before yeah. that window shuts, and then they can get down to business. Yeah. Talk about the, there was a good day, my friends, at Old Trafford, and our friend Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, who you says needs to push him over the line, push him <laughs> over the line. He pushed him over the line this weekend, my friends. Yeah, I mean, wow. I, I think, uh, listen, that, that Spurs performance was, I mean, we saw some incredible performances. I think of the of the big challenges for the title, mm -hmm. I thought Man United were the most impressive, given their opponents. Leeds are a blimmin' yeah. difficult team to play against. Uh, United were absolutely up for it. Some of the movement, talk about an exhibition of how you play against Leeds, Rob, mm -hmm. where you've literally got United players charging everywhere. Boom, like just diagonal runs, moving their players around because of the man-to-man. -man. It moves people around. There's big old spaces in midfield, which United uh, used really well. I thought Man United, were, that's as good as I've seen them play for a long time, Rob, with a, with a football, with the combinations, with the assisting passes of Paul Pogba and the quality finishes of Bruno Fernandes and, and, uh, and a little... A, a, a little, uh, hmm, not really a diamond. We know what he's all about now, but a, but a potential real breakout of Mason Greenwood. Greenwood and others, yeah. will, others will, mm. we'll go on and talk about everybody else in a minute. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Players, but his finish when he went through, Rob, mm. and his celebration, and looking at him kind of physically in this game on camera, it looks like he might have just taken a big step up, a little bit of maturity and a hunger that we saw in the last, what, dozen games where he started to look like... Yeah, he got six goals in the last eight games and, and finished he, really well. If he steps up oh, and can elevate oh. his game with a regular goal scorer, with everybody else in that midfield that we know, I mean, Man United look blimmin' good. Well, we, we were talking in the, in the previous show, weren't we, about United and, you know, I said they, they should be starting to think about titles. And I said, you know, I know there's still areas where they'd want to get stronger, maybe a centre forward and maybe a defensive midfield player. But exactly what you say, if Greenwood grows into this role and continues to, to be, we know Cavani's going to come in and play at times. I think for me, Rob, the big thing with, with United, there's two things that stood out. And I'll talk about the game uh, first in terms of, I thought the quality, Paul Pogba was outstanding. Uh, Bruno Fernandes is a gift. Uh, his goal record and his goal assist and his influence on games is outstanding. The level of football was at some of the best I've seen United, but it was the drive and the energy, Rob. But sometimes it's lacking a bit for Man United. It's so like, yeah. oh, come on, yeah. you know, get on to it. it. That was there. Now, it's game one and the fans are in and 75,000. I know that lifts you. But I was encouraged by that. I thought it was, it, 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 it took me a back, bit back to what United used to be. And I know people say, oh, back in the day. Manchester United teams always worked super hard and had loads of energy. They were brilliant players, but they didn't off match you for the other things as well. That's what I saw in yesterday's game. And just ahead of that, and I have to go to it, when you when you parade Raphael Varane <laughs> before the game, and he looks a million dollars, by the way, struts <laughs> onto the pitch with confidence, <laughs> He's, he's, he's greased back. He's, he looks immaculate. <laughs> he's got his shirt. His yeah. shirt and I'm, go, I'm, I'm like, wow. Taking selfies. I mean, I'd have took a selfie with him. I've got a bromance <laughs> already. I've got a bromance <laughs> with, with, with Rafael. He ain't kicked a ball yet. But he might bring, you know, Rob, that air of when, you, when you've been a class. champion. Some class. Some class. Huh? He might just bring that bit of class into this, this team, this club, that maybe, I wouldn't say he's missing, but... Bruno, you know, Bruno isn't that guy. Pogba can be, but they, they haven't got that one, have they? The, the poster boy. This guy mm. might just just deliver a mm. bit of that. I thought he was he looks magnificent, by the way. He, yeah. uh, he, he'd have got nine out of ten for, for his looks, never mind how he plays. You talk about Oligan Solskjaer, Rob. Let's just quickly talk about him. Now, mm. didn't need to push and drag and push the team over the line, Rob. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, hold on a minute. Hold on what, a minute. No, saying, for the first game yeah. with that flipping support and Old Trafford, mm. packed house, yeah. when everyone's been locked down for the last two years or whatever, yeah. that team reacted brilliantly. And the fans as well really helped the team. What I'm saying, Robin, I know you're putting faces. What I'm trying yeah. to get to is, okay, day one, brilliant. Okay, two, three, four, five, bring okay. it down. Well, and this is where the manager earns his money. Like, guys, that was great. But the next game, then what is offhand, like, we won that every week. And yeah. I, listen, there yeah. will be the odd week off, but that's where United have, have disappointed in the last couple of seasons where there's a little bad run where they yeah. just lose their mojo and then they find it again. 
can they go 35 of the 38 games given as good as they can give? Because that's all the United fans want. They want the players and the squad. Southampton to away. Southampton away next weekend. So you're right. saying it, 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 it's still going to be there. Well, what, yeah, what, what, that, be that's why I disagree and, 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 and think that, you know what, if that was Pep's thing, we'd go, ooh. Sit, you know, sit in good shape. Perhaps got them in good thing. I don't think we give. I think we, we're a bit harsh on Oli. Listen, what, are you they, trying to say they haven't had bad runs before, Rob, and they haven't been consistent. They haven't been consistent. So totally different. I'm, to... I'm absolutely okay with that. But what I'm saying is, you can't just say because seventy five thousand fans are in. Well, that's the reason. Rob, for it's the first game they found. Listen, they played in a Europa final against Villarreal which was packed with should won and didn't get over the line and we criticised him and rightly criticised him but sometimes mm. rightly we should also say by the way he didn't have to get his team ready for action his team were, were yeah, good to uh, go yeah, Racing yeah, Green agreed. was a great great decision Pogba was world class with four assists Bruno Fernandes with a hat trick I mean those things just all don't happen it's almost like if things happen well it's like well it's Man United they're great players and if they don't happen well it's all his fault I just feel sometimes we've no, got to give him... Point, point taken. No, point, point taken, Rob, that, 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 yeah, you're right. He deserves credit as yeah. well as the fans of getting them up yeah. for today. Yeah, but yeah. my point still stands. Correct. Let's see it. Let's, Let's see, see it. it. Well, do you remember Southampton Most a couple of seasons ago? 2 0 down at half time, got hammered, and then I think they came back in 1 3 2 or something with Cavani yeah. came on or whatever. Southampton away is going to be different. Hmm. St. Mary's, you know, big packed stadium, they'll be shouting for the. The Southampton fans and United are going to have to deal with that. And as United grow, and one of the things I keep saying about United is they're still the biggest ticket in the league. They're still the biggest ticket. When not when opposition fans turn up, they want to beat Man United because United have won so much in the past. Then they raise the game, and, and the fans will be behind it. Manchester United are going to have to deal with that. A good Manchester United, if they stay near the top of the league, are going to have to deal with that as well as the opposition. So my underappreciated form of the week, Rob, is a player that. We give him some stick. And, of course, I would believe rightly so. As I wouldn't do it. But I think it's important to give a player credit when they mm, do well. Yeah. And maybe with me and with a lot of uh, a lot of people around football, some at United, maybe a lot outside of United, people in the media, mm. Paul Pogba maybe is a little underappreciated. And today, there's no question, you know, in terms of what he did today and underappreciated Paul Pogba in the past, possibly... Mm. But the, the performance, sorry, uh, yesterday, then he does deserve the, the accolades and the appreciation for a class. On the right-hand side of a, a midfield four, the ability to spot a ball and to, and to process a pass and to figure it all out mm. was fantastic. So underappreciated by me at times and by many others at times, poor Pop Rob for a very, very classy performance in that victory. Yeah. Totally agree with that, and I think Rebecca mm. said before the before the show, you know, is, is he just going to run his contract down? And uh, you know, as I'm looking, at him, I'm thinking, looks pretty committed to me. If you can keep him in that in that mindset and focus, Varane, keep him in it. he knows keep him well, in it. might might um, stoke him on. And and you look mm. around world, you know, the rest of uh, of the world leagues that, that might go. Spain is that a great place to go now? Italy, France. I mean, there's not many better leagues than the one he's in. And if he, if this team starts to win and put some silverware together, which they need to do, and all he needs to do, and that's where he does need mm. to push him over the line. Tell you what, Paul Pogba might just be signing a longer contract and starting to really mm. influence games as he did. Wow. So they're bitter rivals, Liverpool, <laughs> Rob. Let's talk about them next. Uh, yep. Of course, a newly promoted team in Norwich City. Mm. Uh, similar players that we saw a couple of years ago. There's been a little yeah. bit more movement in the market. They brought some players in. Uh, Emi Buendir, of course, one of their stars from last season, the championship has mm. been sold to Aston Villa. Um, difficult day for them, opening day. Again, a good atmosphere, a packed yeah. house, all the flags, etc. But Liverpool, Rob, came to play. Mm. Came to play. And Virgil van Dijk was listed in the starting lineup, which is such a boost in so many ways for the football club. Uh, midfield was a little different. Players have done well in pre-season, deserve their chances. That, that might be something that changes as we go forward. But it was pretty good, Rob, in two key areas. Yeah. And I'll get straight into it. Mm -hmm. From last season, the centre-back situation was just really unlucky with the amount of injuries that they had. Was or is Van Dyke going to get back to his best? He looked pretty good, mate. N mm. Now, I think he admitted afterwards that he's got more work to do, but that was encouraging. That's part one. Part two were the front players and mm. the way that lots of talk was, well, are these want freshen up? Do they need another striker brought in? Do you have to mix it up and bring somebody else in? To... They all look pretty good. They yeah. all got the goals apart from Sadio Mane, who looked bright as well. Jota gets a goal as well. 
I think Liverpool will just about ticked nearly all, all the boxes for opening day. Yeah, I, it just looked to me as though the little bit of, I won't say spirit, because that, that's maybe too deep, but the mojo, that little bit of what, what mm. Liverpool are about felt better. It looks like they're Jurgen Klopp glassless. I don't know what the, the, the no glasses thing is, whether he's on contacts or he's trying to change the look, but just his, his demeanour, he was hugging again. Van Dijk getting through 90 minutes, you're absolutely right. Mm. Jota played for 60 minutes and gets his goal. Bobby Firmino comes on five minutes later, gets his goal important. Two assists by Mo Salah, one that I think he means, one that I'm not too sure he does. And then Mo Salah, as ever, scores a brilliant goal himself to, to get his goal. It was a, it was almost a perfect day. Alisson came up with a big save late on to mm. keep the clean sheet, which is important for the defenders and, and him. And you're right, you know, the, the injuries the injuries coming back are almost like new players for, for Liverpool. That You know, you've got Matic playing, Gomez was on the bench, Van Dijk got through, and the, there's more to come from the group. I also think there was there was a couple of little sneaky bonuses. Yeah. Nabi Nabi Keita. Yeah. It was a sneaky little bonus, Rob. That it did okay, yeah. Did okay that closed down that won some interceptions. It drove forward a little bit. If he can just find that finishing touch in and around that last third, be a little bit more confident and concentrated on his finishing, he might have a role to play this year. Mm -hmm. And there's I'll check this this was kid Harvey Elliott as well, by the way. Yeah, who came yeah. on for 10, 10 minutes? He was he eighteen, nineteen or something. If, yeah. if Jurgen Klopp, eighteen, if Jurgen Klopp's trusting him in Premier League games, he's got something mm. special. This kid. Yeah, yeah. I, I think another one I, I chuck in there as well. Trent Alexander Arnold that mm. didn't have a great season last year. And had some difficult personal times. We know that. I thought he looked assured. He looked classy. He worked back. He covered in his position a lot better as well. And also, Rob, just another little finishing point here. Diogo Jota and Firmino, mm. how about mm. that? How about a little bit of that? How about a little bit of you today? A little bit of you next day? And how about you scoring mm. a goal? And well, you want to come on and score a goal. And how about that for something mm. that could be new, that could push each other for another avenue of goals? It can't all be about Sadio Mane and Mo Salah. That was, it was when they were so great in the championship. The centre forward has yeah. got to chip in with more. Mm. And with, with Jota, he is just, I just feel like every time I watch him play, Robbie, it, it, it gets a goal or looks like scoring. So that yeah. Yeah. is another potential uh, improvement mm. that they can get more goals from somebody else. Yeah, it's a good point. Really good point. Competition might just bring the best out of both of them. Let's just quickly turn to Norwich, Rob, because uh, Daniel Falk has got his team back on 97 points as champions. Um he said that I, I read a little bit of research, obviously, before the game, and I, and I read that he said his team are more athletic, more physical, better prepared for what the demands of the Premier League are going to be about. I think they conceded 75 goals last time they were in the league, so can't get anywhere near them. What, what What's your thoughts? Do you see them being better? Josh Sargent's come in at USA uh, International, brings a bit of physicality. Good play, word of Bremen comes and, and um, you know, he's shown that he can play it at a certain level, but good yeah. opportunity for him to have a platform yeah. to grow. Uh, uh, Where do you see Norwich? Yeah, well, I think just on Josh Sargent, I mean, a pretty, not perfect, but not far off perfect place to come and learn a little bit about the Premier League yeah. and get plenty of minutes at that football club. Mm -hmm. uh, a lovely part of, of, of England, a, a really nice manager that seems a good guy. It's a, it's a, it's a homely club, a lovely place to come and, and do some business. Yeah. I like what, I, what I've seen from Josh Sargent throughout. Mm. Um, so it's really great to see him in this Norwich team. I looked at the, we get stats every, uh, at the halftime, Robin, I think the stats were 10 shots, four on target for Liverpool in the first yeah. 45 minutes. Like, and I know it's Liverpool, I get mm. that, but I, you, you talked about the goals conceded. They won five games, Rob, last time. And, yeah. and, they've surely learned a little bit that they're going to have to be a little bit more cautious. I know that that's not the Norwich way. And yeah. The philosophy will will dictate how they play. But, yeah, again, day one, Liverpool's a mm. tough opening fixture, but they've got to be conscious of how they do without the ball in this, mm. this incredibly difficult league. Let's move it to Stamford Bridge, where I think yep. Thomas Tuchel plays games, wins games, wins trophies. Um, hasn't had much time with a lot of players returning from various international tournaments to come back. Uh, won the Super Cup midweek with the um, penalty uh, shootout when he puts Kepa on in the last minute of extra time. Mm. Comes up trumps, Kepa makes a save. He puts a different looking Chelsea team out uh, against, Crystal, uh, against Crystal Palace and gets the job done again, Rob. There's a 
there's an efficiency, there's a drive. When you talk about that push and drive, and obviously at times I wind up in terms of other managers, but he exudes drive, focus, and the importance of every football match. He's what I call a proper coach. Yeah, he's a proper coach, Rob, and I think he's he's a big part of why I think they could go all the way and, and are my tips to win the, the Premier League title, Rob, because of that incessant demands on his players. Mm. I think, you know, from Pulisic scoring a goal, from Ziyech looking bright before he goes off with a look like a nasty shoulder, shoulder injury, yeah. uh, you know, there's goals in and around that front line without Lukaku playing just yet. He mm. guarantees you a good amount of goals. My only concern, a little bit, is just uh, with individuals, the centre backs. You know, Tiago Silva's another year on. Really, I think's an excellent defender. Is it Christensen? Are they, they're trying to sign. I uh, can't think of his name. They're trying to sign a, another. Is it Sevilla? They're trying to sign a centre back that's highly mm. rated. Um, but defensively, Trevor, they Trevor can Chalibur. do. But don't forget yeah, Trevor, Chalibur. Chalibur. He, he came in. And, yeah, he came yeah. in and got his goal, which is great. They're a strong. They're a strong side. Rob options everywhere. Midfield, wing backs, attacking midfield players, and now strikers. Um, comfortable, comfortable 3 0 victory at home. Again, the big boys like the home fans back as well as everybody else. And I think we saw that in, uh, in a well, really comfortable, purring it, performance from if him. If everybody's fit, Rob, and everything's in place, and I know some places are up for grabs, but who are the two underneath? If Lukaku gets the central spot, who are his on the big days when he needs to put it out? Who are his two? Who fills those two spots? Werner, I think Kai, Habits, Kai, Habits, Mount, Kai Habits is in for Pulisic. me. Oh, so difficult. I mean, they've yeah. got a crazy amount. They've got Ziyech, yeah. who's probably going to be out, had yeah. a really good preseason. Mm. I mean, Werner, if you want pace, is it going to be yeah. Werner, uh, Habits, and 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 um, Lukaku? Mount, could he play in midfield? I mean, Ma I mean, it's just there's just a lot if they yeah. go with that system, which I think they will yeah. again. The yeah. wing backs. See, the, the way you get Pulisic and Hudson Odoi mm. and others in this side yeah. might be going right. to the wing backs, Rob. Yeah. So they can have that that kind of potential attacking thrust as well. But yeah. that's what it's all that's that's what we're saying. The balance, yeah. you know, options and the size of the squad mm. when the Champions League kicks in in September and all, all through kind of through the winter and, and through into the knockout stages, they've got a pretty complete squad. Yeah. Um yeah, so good start. Interesting as well, a little bit of business there on just before we move on. It looks like Tommy Tommy Abraham's gonna to go to Roma. But interesting enough with Chelsea, buyback clause. I think 70, 80 million dollars buyback clause, which they just, you know, if he goes and turns into a Lukaku or a superstar, you know, Chelsea are clever enough to say, oh, and we'll get him back as well. You know, yeah, they have an option. option. Go do their business problem. There's a few mm. other clubs around uh, London and, and certainly in the league who could probably learn a thing or two yeah. out, out Chelsea the business let's quickly yeah. turn to, to palace rob because obviously a, a good friend of the show patrick vieira we both played against got to know a little bit when he was at new york fc um difficult one for him and where you, uh, chelsea i'm sure he knows he's going to be uh, easier days than that but do we get enough do, do we see enough from from patrick what we expecting really from from patrick's palace didn't see enough yet rob didn't see enough i mean it's it was in that window where there's a million yeah. games going on at the same yeah. time. It's really hard to focus on everything. Uh, tough game for them to start with. Uh, the team looked a lot younger, younger a lot yeah. different. We expected yeah. that. Again, my concerns will still be the same for a while now. New manager, new style, new players. Yeah. At a club like Crystal Palace in, in the Premier League, that's hard to pull off. So, again, you know, Chelsea away. No alarm bells, of course, yeah, like yeah. at this point, and rightly yeah. so. But we'll see over the next few weeks, we're going to know a lot more, Rob. We're going to know mm. a lot more in the next two or three, four weeks of where this club looks like, with the manager and some of these new players, that a lot of them are not really proven Premier League players. Mm. And uh, listen, there, there's some, there's still some good players there, a couple of them are injured right now, that I believe that will be enough in the end to, to stop them in the league. But, mm. but that's not a guarantee. And I still have a concern that they... They could be looking over their shoulder if you know some of these young ones don't quite pan out. But listen, we'll see. Long, long, yeah. long. I did, I, did, I did hear Patrick say that you know it's it's obviously we need a couple more bodies in. Some people with a little bit of know how, so there might be a little bit of activity between now yeah. and August that will help yeah. him out. And then we're going to have to yeah. see. You know, he's going to have to deal with what he's got and let's see how we we go. With maybe till we get to Christmas. Let's turn it to the first game of, of, of this uh, season, mate. And it was the it was the Brentford Community Stadium and. I think we're all just looking forward to a game. Brentford, you know, is a great story. Small club in, in West London who've never been in the Premier League before. 
we're taking on Arsenal and, we, you know, we had the guys at the, the pit side and we started to see the fans come in. And I think we all thought we were in for a decent game. I'm not sure we all sort of realised what we would see. Mm. Brentford probably the better team, dominated, yeah. beat the Arsenal defensively, got their goals, played good, decent football and had an atmosphere in there that it's a little bit of alarm bells, I think, for, for Arsenal and Arteta. Let's get. Let's just. I want to just let's just start with Brentford, Rob. Before we yeah. get into Arsenal, yeah, yeah. Uh, everything's been, everything's been so positive on this podcast so far, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> All the people, yeah. we've like so and much then, praise. Um, Everybody's looked so great. I'm afraid we're gonna have to bring it down a awesome. minute with Arsenal. <laughs> but Brentford, yeah. I mean, I t- first of all, I. I think we expected a a lively atmosphere. Yeah. That little stadium, I think it's the capacity is seventeen and a half thousand. It's a small club with a smallish stadium, but still made a tremendous amount of noise and still managed to get the I mean, goosebumps. You know, yeah, and all of us yeah, we saw some yeah. of the scenes and the Hey Jude and the singing and the old chap with the tears streaming down his cheeks, who, who looked stunned by the whole situation. It was a brilliant, brilliant day for them. But the football, Thomas Frank, bright, uh, passionate. Connecting with the fans, obviously, already from what he's done at the, the football mm. club. Ivan Tony, Brian Mbomo, handful, a front two mm. that out of out out of a little bit of old school football. This club is anything from old school. So yeah, don't yeah. Me, we're mm. not going down that road, but as a pairing that can do a little bit of both, as a team that will try and play. Obviously, they press. They're expansive. They're very much the modern football scene with a little bit of that as well, yeah. with a little bit of direct balls, with a little bit of long throw-ins, Robbie Hill, with a little yeah. bit of set-piece power and and, and, and corner kicks, etc. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm all in for long ball and long throws, Mr. <laughs> Mr. You know, that's my game. Well, yeah, it, so it, was, was it was always nice to see a little bit of, of a mix, wasn't it? A little bit of return. And, and what was interesting, that Ben White for, for Arsenal was making his debut, a uh, £50 million signing. Uh, couldn't handle it, by the way. Couldn't handle Ivan Tony in the air. Tony yeah. was dominating headers, bringing his teammates in. We saw on Bomo, we saw on Yeka at times running through from, from midfield. Yeah. And yeah. it's um and it, it was really interesting when Thomas Frank after the game, and he was obviously emotional, it was obviously a great day for them and the C points. But he also said he was disappointed we didn't we, we, we can get down and play better. Yeah. You know, he wants a bit more football out of his team as well. Yeah. He wasn't just happy that you know we out muscled and were physical and won some headers and, and played. He wants his team to play as well, Rob. Yeah, he does. Um, maybe against other opponents on different days, we're going to see mm. more of that. Yeah, um, got to be, of course. Like, there's got to be careful. There's got to be caution with that. If mm. you try and play too much, you give the ball away, etc. In this league, um, but as an opening day, wow, um, just very, very pleased with Brentford Football Club. Okay, <sighs> too much niceness on this podcast, Rob. <laughs> um, too much positivity. So, should, where should we turn? North London. Oh, let's turn to Mikel Arteta's face afterwards with the interview. A face like thunder. Uh, God, blimey. A good, a, a not a bad second half to last season. They win the last five games in the Premier yeah. League. Yeah. There's some signings, young players, decent prospects into the football club. Arsenal fans need and want to see a load more, of course. Mm. But a few signings where I'm like, kind of like Le Congre midfield. It looks okay. Ben White, a, a good player. with. I mean, I, I, I didn't mind the signings. Uh but you kind of take one step forward with all those things I've said there and then a couple of steps back. The news of Aubameyang, Rob, and Lacazette being yeah. ill last night, I'm like, Ill uh, night before wow, the game. that's some pretty bad luck. That's some pretty bad <laughs> luck for both to get ill the day before uh, the game. Mm-hmm. And then you've what got you Balagon. Say, Mr. Musto, that, 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 that seems a little Just incredible. Terrible luck. Just terrible oh, oh, luck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both go into the same place. Yeah, terrible luck. But we go without them. We go with the, some of the younger players who we trust, who've done us a decent job at times. But you can only go so far in those kind of situations without a few good pros around them. You know, the Ben Whites will, will get better and, and, and I think it will end up being a decent uh, signing. But Debut for him, for his football club. He probably needs a bit of help. Pablo Marie was next to him, didn't particularly do that well. And Jacker, you know, is very divisive, but at times couldn't really put get a hold on, on the midfield. And, and going forward, um, didn't really have the experience, the threat. I thought Smith Rowe was was the bright spark. Who continues yeah. to want the ball and try and make things happen. Nicola Pepe in and out the game, doesn't influence enough, doesn't take hold of games enough and, and dominate them. Um, and because of that, Rob, 
Arsenal were Arsenal, and somebody said, you know, different season, same old Arsenal. Mm. It shouldn't be though, Rob. Um, there should be signs of progression. It's a tough team. I mean, I'm just looking down at the players not available. Thomas Partey was a was a an yeah, ankle injury is a yeah, blow. Yeah, not you know, seeing the mid of him. Yeah, between Granite Xhaka and, and Partey and Lokonga, you know, there, there's a basis of some good foundation in the middle mm. of the park. Mm. Uh, Lacazette and Bambi, we just talked about. I mean, don't know what's going on there, mate. Maybe they both got ill at the same time the night before the opening of the season. I don't know. Uh, Gabriel is another central defender. Um, yeah. They need the, the squad. My main thought afterwards was, was like that the squad needs some help. And the club's got to spend some money. Yeah, it's transitional. And they've got they've done pretty well to get rid of some players that are not the future of Arsenal. And that's mm. taken a couple of windows. Um, they've saved players off the wage bill. They need more. They need more money, more players coming in, experienced players. And, and you know, you can't... I looked at the squad, Rob, the list of Arsenal players. You know, outside of Aubameyang and Lacazette, it's very young. Like, young yeah. everywhere. Yeah. You know, Martinelli. Well, well, they've kind of got Malaga, themselves in this spot, Rob, Smith, haven't they? Uh, they They've kind of got themselves in this spot. And it's a bit like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I, I'm now at the point where I want to... I'm, I'm questioning, and I'd like it to be a, a positive outcome. Is Mikel Arteta the right man, good enough to do the job? And remember, we had this with Ole over the last couple of seasons, and Bex used to say, and we had the conversations. And I've always said, need to, Ole needs to be backed, and then we'll find out whether he's good enough or not. Manchester United, in fairness, have, have done that in recent times, and, and their recruitment's been a lot better. And I think in the next season or two, we'll find out if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is good enough to take United back to where they want to be. Hmm. Mikel Arteta is in the same place at Arsenal. Arsenal is a giant of a football club. It's a giant of a football club, but based on history, on what it's won and on the past. Currently, Rob, it's not even a big six team. I mean, we must have been delighted to get the call to go in the European Super League because they weren't getting in anywhere near in terms of performances. Was it two, 2004 last time they won the title? So, mm. but for, for, for Mikel Arteta, I want to find out, Rob, is he good? I hear good things about his training and things, but what's, right. his, man, man, what's his man management like? What's his tactical game like? What's his, his, man, his man management of play, players? You know, his, his control of players who sometimes, you know, the red cards and all, all that thing. Losing points from, from winning positions, all the little bits that make him a great manager. I want to find out, and I don't know unless you back him, give him some money to spend, and, and it might be they have to go category, category B and develop some talent. They're not going to go top end category A, plus, but find out if he's good enough or not. Because we keep hearing about the plan and the process and our tatter. We never really, you know, he's always got a bit of an excuse, like you're saying, well, look at the squad and look at that. How are we ever going to find out about him? The hardest thing to find out, and I think what we've seen tactically of his teams look pretty smart. You know, I, I should imagine his training is pretty good. The mm. hardest thing for us is to, to have an opinion on is his man management mm -hmm. and what it's like in that dressing room. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, if he's as miserable and as straight-faced <laughs> and pan-faced as he is in interviews and uninspiring in interviews, and I get it because managers probably do best to just bat away the questions and be and be like that. I know there's an element of that with most managers, but is he inspiring? You know, I go back to the, the North London derby when Aubameyang was late in traffic and he humiliated his captain. He stuck him in the stand. The, the, the cameras panned in on this miserable-looking Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And I remember saying on the show, wow, that that is a is a proven goal scorer for many seasons in different clubs in different countries. Wow, yeah, it worked out in the day, Rob. They won the game, and everybody said, "Well done, Mikel Arteta." Mm. There's rumours that he's not happy. There's also rumours that Lacazette's not happy. Now, whether that's got to do with their illness this weekend, I don't know. But back to your to the point and the question: his man management isn't yeah. that often the but, hardest but they thing. Won, they won, didn't they? They won right? when, he, when he put. Oh, so I, mean, uh, I said, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, it works out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but players yeah. they get humiliated. What, don't what, forget what you that. Got, you, you've been in football enough. You know, you've been around dressing. You've been around lots of managers. What you got to tell you about Mikel Arteta? My, my gut tells me that there might be a bit of uh, arrogance around mm, him. Like an aloofness. I know best. Maybe a little aloof. It's my way or the highway. This club needs strong management, and I kind of get that. Mm. All I would say is, Rob, as a player, like like as a player, you, 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 have to, you have to earn 
the respect as well. Yes, I'll give you respect. You're my mm. gaffer. You're my coach. Mm. But but show me show me something that makes me want to run through a brick wall for you and, yeah. and put your shoulder around me. Talk to me. Inspire me. Don't talk down to me. Don't treat me like a little kid. Don't lie to me. Don't put me out the side and give some other reason for it. So again, these are the hardest things to yeah. try and establish. Yeah, yeah. We know, you and I know, mm. that that relationship is critical. Yeah. And if it isn't right, and you know, you just know if a coach doesn't fancy you, you know, he, he'll talk to others before talking to you. He doesn't include you in certain things or in certain banters. I just don't know what he's like like that. No, Rob. we don't. But, you, you don't but he's trying to figure out why mm -hmm. there seems that there's a bit of a disconnect. All that being said, I know it's match day one. I know that we get a little bit Johnny Kneejerk. Rob, mm -hmm. and we overreact sometimes. Yeah. I get that. But that's our job at times is to react yeah. to this current weekend. Mm. But I just saw him and afterwards. I thought, God, God, he looks so painful. And I know he's got to be serious. Um, there's got to be a reaction, Rob. Like, yeah, right? yeah. I, I, I cool. feel he's a good coach, mate. I mm. feel he's got good experience. He's got good knowledge. Cool. He knows what he wants to do with, with his team. But uh, there's other things as well. Mm. In, in Yeah, in good coaching is only part of it, Rob. Man management is way yeah. more important than yeah, good coaching. Super important. Yeah. Way more important yeah. than good coaching. And uh, yeah. we'll see over the course of the season how the sort of journey goes with Mikel Arteta in Arsenal. But mm. um, got to hope for better days for... For the, uh, for the for the Gunners coming up. Let's round up uh, a few of the other games, mate, before we call it a day. Uh, Burnley got up to a good start with 1-0 up and then conceded two goals later on in the second half. Not like Sean Dyche's team. Brighton get a 2-1 win and all of a sudden, you know, the knee-jerk reactions are, oh, maybe it's not Burnley's year this year, the year they go down. I think Rebecca has suggested on the lowdown uh, this weekend. <laughs> uh, Leicester won Wolves won. I watched this game... Um, Leicester win courtesy of a beautiful Wolves nil, yeah. Wolves nil sorry. Uh, yep. Leicester won Wolves nil. Yeah. Uh, courtesy of a Jamie Vardy finish, mate. It was classic cool. Vardy what in the box. What a finish that was, by the way. Came across the, the front of <laughs> Connor Cook, left foot, clips it into the box. And then, in contrast in this game, the two probably best chances for Wolves fall to Adama Traore, who's, who's an excellent footballer, but just doesn't have that same touch and feel and understanding around the 18-yard box. Mm. Two chances came to him, one he put wide, one he put straight at the keeper. Mm. So two games that I want to touch on, Rob, and games that I watched closely, yeah. I really enjoyed. And again, I think for the majority of this, this podcast and, and the review of the weekend, a lot of good stuff. Everton. Mm. Everton. Rafa Benitez. Unpopular with some. Basic football. 4-4-2 four, four, pretty, or pretty close to it. Develop plays in wide areas, overlapping fullbacks, crosses into the box for the two centre forwards. It was kind of simple but effective. Mm -hmm. And I've just got a feeling, Rob, that that he might do all right, you know. He yeah. might do well there. He's a motivating type of manager. I think, you know, people, fans like him. He connects to yeah, support. He does. Yeah, he does. He's a legend yeah, of Liverpool. Newcastle yeah. United still yeah. want him right now. Mm. I mean, there's been a few jobs that didn't work out, of course, yeah. for, for all coaches. I just think, and again, I know it's only a day where I kind of like what they did, Rob. Yeah. Simplicity, he's going to stick to, he's going to focus on the basics that Everton didn't mm. show at times last year. So I thought they were impressive uh, in beating Southampton 3-1. They yeah. really did. Yeah. Nobody writes a note like Rafa as well when he's watching a game. Writes a note, puts a <laughs> note, and no, he quite does it like Rafa. But yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes you know, for all the tactics and transitions and moving that, sometimes some some yeah. good you know players understanding what you want and what their role is can be as important as all the tactics and the the, the, the yeah. current you know vogue of, of transitions and all those things. And the other game, Rob. Uh, and we just we watched it today. Yeah. Another team that I I was super impressed yeah, with is yeah. West Ham United. Where are going to go? Well, yeah. No, I I know we 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 watched them last year. Finished two points outside the Champions League. I got to be honest. I thought this season, like, well, it's tough to repeat that. Jesse mm. Lingard came in and scored mm. all those goals. Yeah. And boosted them to the top of the league. Uh, but God, they were good today. They yeah. they were good today. Newcastle United, St James's Park, fans back in an awkward match. All their fr uh, front players fit. Sam Maximin, Wilson, yeah, uh, Aaron, it everybody quite else. Well, as well, Newcastle didn't start. They started pretty well, but yeah. didn't, they were. They, I think West Ham were losing at halftime. Rob, what? Losing two saying, one, yeah, they, yeah, they were one up, then losing but two. I one, remember yeah. saying on our broadcast that they, they, they look strong. Like mm. this isn't over. And yeah. I, I thought West Ham, cool, a little bit of everything, Rob, a little bit of technicality, a yeah. little bit of power, uh, yeah. plenty of work ethic. I, I just think they've got it. They've got it going. And he, he felt good about preseason. 
Uh, he feels good about where they are right now. Now is the time for mm. for for David Gold and David Sullivan to give him a couple, That's give him a couple yeah, of players, Rob, yeah. to to add to this. This is a nice bit of momentum they're gaining. This has had a couple of players, and it could be another blimmin' impressive season for them. Absolutely, and um, you know the thing I like about them—they look fit, they look sharp, they look committed. Cool. And you know, as I look at the group and I see Moisey. There's no big time trolleys in there, Rob. There's no one who's no, hogging the headlines thinks they're any them. better than the team. There's a good group of, of players who I think again will be will we you know, listen, they might not finish yeah. six, but they, I think they'll be top half of the table. They're, they're, no, but I, I think they're I think I think they're looking at top six, Rob. Yeah, I think well, they're going for fifth and sixth. They, there's a Tough consistency about Moise's teams when, when he's got them right and in yeah. the groove, and then they're starting to get right and, and they in the stay groove. fit. Yeah, not a big squad. They got to stay for it. Yeah. Let's just move on to the last game, Watford Villa, Rob. And this one surprised. Watford went three 0 up in this game, and, and Villa did try and come back. I think it was John McGinn and Danny Ings with with, with two goals, but weren't able to 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 get the result. Yeah. But um, yeah. really good start for for, for Watford and, and Munoz, the the manager on the side. I saw. I uh, had, had a glimpse when the first goal went in, and he was jumping up yeah. and down on, on the touch line. And yeah. well, listen, I don't quite know what to expect from Watford, but it looks pretty good. It's tough to know what to expect from Watford, Rob, yeah, because they buy so team. many blimmin' players. <laughs> they buy so many players. And we know about yeah. their recruitment and their contacts all over Europe. We get that. Mm. And it's been a strength for the most part. And what I did see, I saw an interview. Uh, it was a player, Watford player, and it was uh, Cisco Munoz. Munoz, yeah. And it, it, the theme was basically what a lovely guy the manager is, Rob. And how he's connected mm. with the football club and how the players and the fans love him. And I think the celebration and the warmth that I got from the interview that I watched in the summer about this guy and about this, 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 of course, back into yeah. the top flight, I'm like, wow, he's, he's got them going here and, and they like him. So it's certainly one to watch. Now, new players, Emmanuel Dennis gets a, a debut goal yeah, for Watford. Football goal, club. Yeah, yeah. It's made a sar is the one that everybody knows about with Watford. Scar, yeah. And he's got a ton of goals, Ash, in the championship, uh, made the first one, scored the second one as well for Watford. So mm. uh, a great start because... I worry about him this year, and I had him one of my three to go down. Yeah, and of course, there's a, such a long time period of time to go now, but that's a great start at home. Mm. New player scoring, looking really, really good. And the manager jumping up and down the sidelines always a it's always a good look. So we've got a nice finish for you today, my friend, because we've mm. gone to Points Bet Sportsbook, our, our partners who, who give us odds, and I've asked for the odds for the PFA Player of the Year. So the Player of the 38 games who we think is going to win the PFA Player of the yeah, Year that's the award. Players. That's, that's the, the players. PFA players. players that is the players player. Of the year. You know, so the players play. Who they who are they going to vote, vote for yeah. as their Player of the Year? And there's there's, there's a lot of names in the frame, but I'll, I'll give you some of the, some some of the headline ones in terms of Kevin De Bruyne heads it at plus 600. Last year's winner. Last year's winner. Yeah. At plus PFA 600. Yeah. Bruno Fernandez is at plus 700. And we get the likes of Jack Grealish at plus 850. So people think he's not only going to get in the team regular, but obviously have an influence. Uh, Harry Kane's at plus 900. Not sure if that's playing for Spurs or Man City. Then we go to the Mo Salas is plus 1200. And then we start going out to the, the Sterling's, Van Dyke's, Jotters at plus 1600. Uh, Pogba's at plus 1600. Mason Mount's at plus 1800. And then we go out to the to the two thousands, which is a uh, Jaden Sancho and Golo Conte a plus two thousands, um, and Ruben Diaz plus two thousand. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, uh, Kai Havertz is the other plus two thousand. Ruben Diaz is plus two thousand five hundred twenty five hundred. And I I had to ask because you know he's my my new man, Rafael Varane. Is it mm. plus twenty five hundred too? You miss one player out, my friend, and that's okay. You miss one player out, and it's the player with the price that I would put in a, a few of my hard. Well, I knew you wanted this guy, so I'll, 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 I'll let you have, let you have your uh, moment. <laughs> Romelu Lukaku is plus eighteen hundred. Plus eighteen hundred. Now we know this. This ch we know he's going to play all the well, a ton of games. Mm. We know they're going to be good. We know they got tons of creative attacking midfield players to create and assist. I think he's going to have a big season, Rob. He's going to have a big season. If Chelsea have a big season and they win the Premier League title, Lukaku's absolutely going to be the top goal scorer and with a real chance of winning PFA Player of the Year. I tell you, the big tip right here on the first podcast of this new season is to put a little bit of money on with points bet. Our, our uh, bookmaking partners, partners yeah. at Lukaku at 1,800. That's, that's, the, that's going to be, that's your value right there. 
Rafael Varan plus two twenty five hundred. <laughs> Manchester United win the yeah. title. Varan yeah, comes yeah. in so for out. They do love a centre off at the Van Dykes and the Diazes of the world. So yeah. that's my little way. Twenty five hundred. I'm I'm going to put a dollar on Rafael Varan. Listen, mate, it's been a great weekend. Uh, shame to have that we've got to wrap it up. But from Friday night's emotional evening at Brentford Community Stadium to Sunday at Whitehall Lane Stadium. Premier League is back. The fans are back. The two Robbies are back too. It's been an incredible weekend, my friend. Three of the big four won games. Manchester United probably been the most impressive. While reigning champions Manchester City slipped up at Nuno's first game in charge of Spurs. Listen, look out for our next podcast. That's going to be on Wednesday, August the 18th. So this Wednesday, we're going to have a look forward to the second set of games in the Premier League. And obviously, we'll report if there's any news in the Harry Kane saga. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Mustoka. Together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Stay safe. Be healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good Good night. night.